the last Launchpad project that we talked about was Farcana, and it was a Web3 game. And this was actually launched on Tencent, and it sold out in under three minutes. And it's not an exaggeration that uh, the crypto angel asset market is picking up. And I can tell you, Farcana is probably going to do pretty well. I'm glad we covered it. But I think we've got something bigger today. And one of the things that, that led me to Ivanpay was there's always this, this aura around crypto and digital assets as being a cryptocurrency and used for payment. And I can just tell you that if this actually happens, which I think it's going to, uh, this could be a real game changer. So when I was looking at Ivanpay, is that it had uh, already linked up with Binance Pay, and this just happened in April. And then they got together with GatePay and then KuCoin. And they've just been building massively in the bear market. And of course, I always talk about if you're building in the bear, you're going to crush in the bull. And Ivanpay has been doing exactly that. Massive amount of partnerships with coins and stable coins, blockchains, fiat payment, media partners, e-commerce, you name it. It really comes down to about what this can do, which is going to be saving businesses billions, if not trillions of dollars. And let me explain. There was a post and it struck me and it made a lot of sense to me because we always talk about how crypto can be a currency. These states are the best on and off ramps for crypto. Stop relying on centralized exchanges. Start getting more of your family, friends, and business partners directly into the crypto economy by using cryptos for purchases and financial transactions. By accepting crypto at your businesses or for your time and services, you become the best on and off ramp. The less we use fiat, the better off the world is. And I thought to myself, this is a very, it's, it's a very eloquent way to say it. And it sounds good, but I wish we had something to bring us into the next step. I think Ivanpay actually is. So taking a look at this here, we want to break this down for the deep dive into the cut. Will it make the cut? The community utility team and tokenomics. So let's just let's just take a look at what it is when you order something. And it's very simple. You say, okay, the check, I'll take the check. Let me bring that uh, machine over here and I will give you my credit or debit card or I'll tap my phone, put in the amount and then I'll pay for it with my MasterCard or Visa or something like that. So what's happening behind the scenes for the business is I don't know if you know this, but every time you swipe your card, it's called a swipe fee. And on average, and this is data from 2023, you're looking at 2.24%, which is being charged to the business itself. Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. Uh, Stripe, the one that I use for my online payments for my businesses, it's 2.99% plus 30 cents per transaction cost. So uh, these things tend to add up. But the question I had for everybody was, well, how much is it? And do you know what it is? So I actually pulled this on, on uh, X. I just asked people, I go, hey, do you know your transaction fees? And almost half of the people said, I'm not sure. I don't know how much I'm paying in transaction fees. And that to me was quite scary because, okay, well, let's say you're paying $100,000. We'll just we'll, we'll put there in, the, in that, that third category. So if you're spending 2.5%, that's $2,500 that you have to actually spend on just transaction fees, which go to MasterCard and Visa. And that's only 100000 Imagine if you're making a million dollars in trans and not just the revenue, but the transaction fees. Now, if you're doing that, it's $20,000 or $25,000. What if you could do that and cut it in half? What could you do with it? Well, if you cut that in half, you could probably lower some of your costs. You could actually be a little more profitable. You could, you know, the profit and losses would actually be quite favorable. And that's why I think that payments are in for quite a disruption. So let's take a look then at why this is important. Because with here, with Ivanpay, what they're going to do is instead of you paying that 2.34% or whatever it was, it's only 0.2 to 1% for crypto processing fees. You can decide how much you pay. We'll talk about that. And you're going to use the token to reduce the fees all the while avoiding exchanging rates. So let's just take a look at what that would look like again using Ivanpay. Same situation. And you're going to say, oh yeah, check. Here we go. They're going to bring over the little device and they're going to put in the actual bill for however much it is, 100 and 67 the situation next and then they're going to say what would you like to pay in and there's going to be over 82 choices at current present and this is uh january 16 2024 for what you have in your crypto wallet 82 different options on this situation we would use binance pay and they will put it in they click on next and person go okay great binance pay i'm going to uh, not swipe my car but use the nfc and just kind of tap it for 45.38 and voila i am done and i paid for my whatever they paid for 
So the next question probably is, well, Rob, no one's going to come in there and pay everything for crypto. Well, obviously that's the truth, but you have to give your customers options. Some people just like to pay cash, but in normal places, either cash or Visa or MasterCard. And now, of course, we have the option of using crypto digital assets. Now, look, uh, here in Puerto Rico, there's a couple of places that I go to. They only accept cash. It's quite annoying, but I understand why they only accept cash is because they don't like to pay for the transaction fees or whatever else they're doing. So when I take a look at this, it's just about giving people options. And this is the best thing to do. You can attract more people by saying, hey, we got cash, we got debit, we got credit. We also got crypto. It's up to you what you want to do. This attracts more people. So when I talk about 82 different cryptocurrencies or digital assets, here they all are. And there is a, not to beat a dead horse, ton, pun intended, uh, ton, BNB, ETH, Bitcoin, and stuff I've never heard of, Brees, Tat, well, Eagle, sure. MM Pro, Chess, PL, I mean, you can, we'll take a look at it in a bit. And there's just a ton of them. And then, of course, I actually registered for an account just so you could see uh, what we have here. And yeah, there's a ton of different ones that you can, you can turn on or turn off. And again, it's only 0.2 to 1% per transaction fee. And the thing that got me as I was thinking to myself, I'm like, wait a second, Ethereum is on here. And I know Ethereum, the gas fees are ridiculous. Here's the thing with, with Ethereum or any other different crypto. The transaction cost, if you wanna send me funds, you still have to pay the gas fee for Ethereum. I am only paying the 0.2 to 1% for the transaction fee to transact in this crypto or digital asset. So it's the transaction fee that you have to deal with as far as the gas, that is on your side. And that's why I don't understand why people are using Ethereum right now because the gas fees are too high. But Tron, Open Network, Cardano, Near Protocol, Dogecoin, Polygon, all those are super duper cheap to use. And if I'm going to a place where I can use my crypto digital assets, maybe it's a little bit cheaper. Maybe they give me a discount because they don't have to pay so much. So there is that piece. So we have that part. And of course, you can use it uh, for Ivan Pay. This is you know the POS device, which you've seen in the, in the video. You can use it in e-commerce. And what I found interesting here was that they already have a partnership with WooCommerce. And WooCommerce, if you don't know, there's over 4.4 million active stores on WooCommerce. That's uh, up from 1.77 million. It's used by 93.7% of all WordPress e-commerce sites and holds a 30 or 39% market share among the top 1 million sites using e-commerce tech. And they have actually integrated Ivan Pay so people can actually use crypto payments and reduce their transaction costs. And on top of that, they also have a vending machine, but I seriously don't think people are gonna use a lot of that, but I could be wrong, we'll see. And again, you can have this on your phone and you can use the payments. But the question you probably have yourself is, but Rob, why would I even do this? This doesn't make any sense because I will just use Lightning and everywhere I go, I'll just use Bitcoin Lightning or I'll just use Cardano or I'll just use Film Tomato Coin, whatever else it is. Here's the downfall. If you are a merchant, if you are a business and if you are working a B2B, business to business or business to consumer, B2C, you have to understand that different people use different things, different strokes for different folks, right? Some people are gonna walk in like me and say, hey, I'm gonna use Bitcoin Lightning. Okay, uh, well, or I want to use Bitcoin Lightning. Yeah, you can do that, um, but I only use Cardano. Or someone comes in and is like, I only use Polygon. I use a, I only have the Dan Degen coin, which doesn't exist, so don't worry about that. Or a plethora of different ones out there. And of course, you as a merchant, you just want people to come to your store and spend. That's all you really care about. You don't want to debate with them and be like, you know, that's a ghost chain. I don't know why you're using that. It doesn't matter. All you really want people is to come in there, spend their money, and leave and, give, and leave a good review. That's it. Done. So... That's what Ivan Pay solves as far as being able to use it. But then people, would say, you might say to yourself, well, why not just use a bunch of wallets? Okay, if you want to mess around with having 82 different wallets. And of course, yes, there are some wallets that have multiple different uh, different cryptos and stuff in there. And you can use that. But what if you get something crazy like ghost token or a free token or, or whatever tokens that are out there? And they're like, I want to pay in that. You're like, Oof, okay, let me download this. Let me do that. It's a big hassle. So you're really paying for convenience. Again, 0.2 to 1%, not so bad. And the last thing I think is the most important thing is that if you're a business owner, small business, large business, doesn't really matter, to do your taxes and to do profit and loss statements and have everything in there for regulatory compliance, it's important that you have these things. If you don't have this, you just have a hobby. You don't have a business. So what this allows you to do is to essentially put everything under one roof you know exactly what's what's being paid, what's being paid out, the profits and losses. They're going to integrate uh, also with uh, tax services. So with this, 
It's everything that you need to run your actual business instead of screwing around with 30 different wallets and things like that. So that is the whole point. Now, having talked about that, it's like a uh, software as a service. I don't know why we need a token. Why do we need a token? Let's take a look. So again, the token, the crypto processing fees, you guys still got to pay 0.2 to 1% for that. And you can use the IV pay token to reduce said fees. And here's what it all comes down to. The IV pay token, it's a utility token. There's a loyalty program to stimulate the growth of the Ivan Pay ecosystem, mean of value transfer. There is utility features such as users will be able to get up to 50% discount on all operations in the ecosystem, both for business to business and business to consumer solutions. So this token to me, in all honesty, it really looks like it's more of a business oriented token. And I think a lot of businesses will want this because the discounts that they can get instead of having to pay 1% for transaction fees now goes on to 0.5 or 0.2, depending on how much they actually have. And that's why I think this project becomes so unique because it actually has real world utility and you can do real world stuff with it. And of course, stuff like people like us, we can be right there in the middle. So there's also liquidity pool rewards. You can do staking. And this one was very interesting to me. I think it's going to be overlooked. Check this out. Loyalty rewards for affiliates of Ivan Pay Wallet and resellers of B2B business to business products. Introducers and resellers of B2B services who hold IV Pay token, which will be me and you maybe. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. Not financial advice. This token will be able to get up to 20% of lifetime commissions from reselled merchants. What does this mean? This means if you go out there and you sign up for this service, and it's free to actually sign up for Ivan Pay. I've already done it myself. You've seen it before. They're going to, under the ambassador program, there's a referral link. You click on that link and you can go to these different business, B2B type of uh, companies and say, hey, would you like to reduce some of your costs? Or you know somebody who knows somebody? Use my link. You can sign up and it's a, it's a seamless process. And in that situation, again, you get up to 20% of lifetime commissions from reselled merchants. I got to tell you, that doesn't sound too bad. Also, they have token burning, but in this uh, uh, white paper or light paper, it doesn't uh, give the actual mechanism. They say it's burning, so I can't really talk too much on that. Now, there's two types of systems, business to business and business to consumer. Business to business would be something like you're a tire manufacturer and you sell those tires to Ford or Tesla or Kia or whoever else it is. That's a business to business. A business to consumer would be something like your local restaurant, right? They're a business, they sell to you, you're the consumer, so on and so forth. So the business to business discount system goes like this. If you have a 30 day volume of all operations of less than $50,000, this would be revenue volume in all operations. And that's of course in crypto, the discounts if feeds are paid in IV pay, 20%. Wouldn't that be great? You're at 1% at the maximum, then you get down 20%. Now you got to pay 0.8%. I'll take it. And then, of course, it goes uh, even higher, up to 40%, the more tokens that you hold, which is why I think businesses will actually do this because in the long run, that's the bottom line. Business to consumer, almost the same thing, a little bit higher higher rates. And you got uh, 20% to 50%. And then, of course, if you're staking, you also get additional. So it kind of adds up all across the board. Here's the tricky part. Tokenomics, as it always is. The token supply is $1 billion. The supply on TGE, the token generation event, which is happening in a couple of days, five days from now, it's 3.2% of the total supply is going to be on the token generation event. But you'll see right here, the token sale, 55% is being sold. Gotcha. But wait, it's not that great. Marketing and green, that gets 10%. Cash back and rewards, 10%. Again, the whole point of the whole thing. 15% goes to the team. And then, of course, they have to keep the lights on. The DEX and liquidity pools, 5%. That's going to be very interesting when they do the initial DEX offering or the centralized exchange offerings. Advisors get a sliver and the listings don't get too much at all, but they still get something. Here's where it gets fun. Token distribution. So you have to be, be aware of what's happening. And when I first saw this, I was like, this makes no sense. Because why would I talk to people about a public sale and the percentage is only 3.33%? That's the public sale? They're going to do 3%? Because remember up here, you get a token sale of 55%. Where does that come from? Well, the seed round, VCs, investors, angel investors, that's 20%. Private, same thing, just probably not as deep pockets. 20%. Private two, 12%. You're looking right there at 52%. Roughly is in the hands of a very small amount of people. Then you have the public sale of us, 3.3%. That's us. That's just the little people getting in. 
Then the DEX, the, the centralized exchange, the TG is 5%. The team gets, and we just talked about 15, 2, 2, 10, 10. So when I took a look at this, I'm like, why would people go into this? And here's why. If you think about it, and you think, ah, you know, there's so much up here and they could dump on me. Who are they dumping on? They're dumping on 3% of people that own 3% of the token. You think I can get anything out of that? And just look, look at the valuations right now. So the valuation for this will be a million dollars. They've already put in three, four, and two. Who are they going to dump on? You? I mean, I guess they could. I think what's really going to happen is this. And I could be wrong because remember, I cannot give you financial advice and this is risky and we'll talk about that. But if you have something like this, the people that got into it, especially with all the partnerships that they have and how much billing they've actually been doing in the bear market, I'm going to guess that a lot of these seed rounds, private and private suit, they're not interested in a couple of million dollars profit. They don't care about that. They care about the 20X, the 50X, the 100X. And I think they're going to hold on to it. So in all honesty, you got 52, 55% of people who are like, you know what? I might sell a little bit, but I can't really sell too much because the seed round they got 0% on TG and they got a six month clip. They can't even do anything for six months and they get a little bit every 12 months. Private, they get only 5% on the total generation event. Then a three month clip, well, they can't touch it. Private two, 10% on TG. Then a one month clip and they get nine months. And the public sale, you guys or us, we get 30%. 30% gets released on TG, then installments every day for only two months. So if anybody's gonna be dumping, it's gonna be the public. And we'll go from there. But I don't know if that's the best situation or the best output that you want to do. Maybe you want to hold on to this one. It's up to you. Just saying what it actually could be. So now let's finish up and we'll talk about uh, the team and a little bit of the community as well. So the team, it is a young team buoyed by some experience. This is Paul Vyasatsky, no anymore. And this is the two that were actually listed. If you take a look at Ivan Pay on LinkedIn, Here's where they live, and they've got over 55 people that actually work for the company. Most of them are Ukraine, Portugal, U.S. Great. I don't, that's fine. Where they studied, great. This is the thing that I'm always concerned with. What do they do? Because if I got a lot of people who are just in marketing and sales, I'm like, this isn't going to look too good. But if they're in business development, okay, it looks pretty good. Operations, product management, entrepreneurship, administrator. What are they skilled at? Sales, business development, sales management, marketing, lead gen, project management communication, so on and so forth. I just look at this. What do they do and what can they bring to the table? So that would be Paul Wysotsky. This is a young guy, I uh, have to tell you. And he is, before this, he was in the University of Tartu. I'm going to guess that's in Ukraine. Correct me in the comment section. But he went from university to CEO. Now, LinkedIn is not the perfect place to find the information. So maybe there's some kind of gaps in there. But it's interesting that he went from right to that to CEO. But he's got the ace, Melanie Moore. Now, Melanie has a lot of experience in different fintech companies. And she's been quite around for a little bit as far as like with YEA, WAM protocol, decentralized protocols advisory board member for H2, Global Leadership Network for Digital Industries and Global Advisory Board. And that's in the UAB or United Emirates, which is where all the different great crypto products are seem to be migrating to. So there is that piece. And then for the community part, just so you know, their uh, X account is 54,000 viewers and Ivan Pay over on Telegram has roughly 19,000 subscribers. And I've been in there and there's there are people that answer and ask questions uh, pretty frequently. It looks to be okay. So The next and final question is this. All right, well, I'm ready to roll the dice. How do I get into this? Well, there's only one place to do it right now. That's Tencent. So Tencent is going to have their seven-day claim back policy. And this is why I like their launch pad. I've worked with them for now over two years. And like I said, the last one we did, the Farcana did fantastic. I expect this one to do no less, but I could be wrong. They got a seven-day policy to come back. The snapshot's going to happen on January 21st. There's going to be a fair share on January 22nd, and everything wraps up on the 23rd. So the question that you might have is, what is this TGLP and the claim back policy? Essentially, it goes like this. If you don't like what's going on after seven days, if you think to yourself and you see it like, man, this thing didn't go up at all, you can get your money back. You can cancel your purchase up to seven days after the token listing. And of course, the reason why is because products are in the early stages of, of development. Although I think Ivan Pay is a little bit farther along than that. Again, they've got a lot of different partnerships, so it looks pretty good. Now, if you don't understand like how to use Tencent and how to sign up for it, I did two videos. 
I will link them in the description. One is how to get access to Tencent, and then one is a deeper dive in Tencent itself and why I'm actually using it and the different products that we've actually worked together on. So in conclusion, pros and cons. Pros is this. It's got real, real utility. I like that. It'll save companies billions, maybe trillions. I don't know. Real utility. It'll bring new customers in and maybe because if you think about it, when I go to different places and I see like, hey, you guys take Bitcoin, I get kind of excited. You know, so I'm like, hey, look at that. I mean, I, I'm actually in that uh, sector myself. Now, some people say, well, I never use my crypto for payments. That's not the point. Crypto. I mean, people can say it all the, all the time, like, well, you know, Bitcoin is just a gold 2.0. We should never use it. We should never spend it. I'm like, well, that's not what the white paper said, but whatever. So you can decide what you want to do. I think crypto and digital assets is used for payments and a medium of exchange. And it fulfills the goal of making crypto a currency where it's talked about. Again, like what we said in the very beginning from the statement, we, it's up to us to make this actually a currency, to actually use it and not just be a speculative asset and actually turn it into utility so we can prove the SEC and Gary wrong. This is what we want to do. Uh, number four, there's got some pretty massive partnerships we talked about, and there's enormous backing, uh, investors, educators, and companies. Like I said about with Farcana, I knew it was going to be a hit because uh, there was a lot of people behind it, a lot of people talking about it, and that to me is a bellwether of what things to come. Here's the cons. The team's young, and like I said, uh, the CEO just got out of college. Again, there could be some gaps in there. LinkedIn is LinkedIn. But it's buoyed by some experience. I like to see that. And again, they've done pretty well so far. Number two, token tokenomics could be an issue like we talked about. But again, I think that for 3%, that is us. It's not like you know the 40 50% and the team can just dump on us and extract all that money because there's not that much money to take home. I think we're in a, in a good place to actually reap the rewards as uh, people just hold on to it and just see what it can actually do. There's a very small supply available for the average Joe and Jane. That's a big thing because we only got 3%. So I thought Farcana would sell out. I didn't think it was gonna sell out in three minutes. I think it was gonna sell out even faster than that. Number four, it's risky. Everything is risky. There's an old joke and it goes on, well, how do you become a millionaire as an investor? It's very simple. Start with a billion. So remember, anything can go wrong at any time. These are risky and just uh, treat it as such and uh, you know don't spend everything. And lastly, uh, one of the cons is competition and scale. As I was talking about this, I know you were thinking to yourself, you know what, this crypto does that or this platform does that. And of course, yes, you have a point, but it's just the same thing as like, well, do I wanna use Amazon to go grab my food and these different uh, things that I need or do I just go down to Walmart? Do I wanna use Walmart, do I wanna use Target? It's a lot of different things out there that actually do things. I think that Ivan Pay is one of those that could do a whole heck of a lot for a lot of companies to help them out. And then of course, to scale, can they actually bring things up and make this a profitable business and grow from here because there's a lot of growing to do, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Everything we just talked about, there's a link in the description so you can check it out from there, but that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by, I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.